Hello everyone, you are watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video we are going to discuss and practically demonstrate the PNF therapy exercises that can be used to treat Bell's palsy patients. Now I strongly recommend that physiotherapy students must watch my PNF therapy playlist before seeing this video so that they can have a better understanding of the treatment concepts and principles that are being utilized in treating Bell's palsy. Now before a therapist plans to utilize PNF exercises to treat Bell's palsy patients, he or she needs to consider some important points which are as follows. The first point that needs to be considered is to utilize the basic procedures for facilitation and techniques of PNF whenever and wherever possible while exercising the facial muscles. A therapist should always try to utilize stretch and resistance to promote activity on the weaker side. It is also advisable to use icing on the weaker or the paralyzed side of the face before starting with the PNF exercises. Icing the facial muscles improves the tone of the muscle spindle which makes it more sensitive to stretch and resistance. The next point that needs to be considered is that PNF exercises should always be done bilaterally so that the therapist can resist the normal side so that more irradiation can occur on the weaker or the paralyzed side of the face. A therapist can also utilize timing for emphasis by preventing full motion to occur on the normal side and thereby reinforcing and promoting the muscle activity on the weaker side of the face. The next important point that needs to be considered is that PNF exercises for facial muscles should always be done in diagonal pattern to have best results. And finally, a mirror should always be there in front of the patient while performing PNF exercises for good visual feedback. So let's start with the demonstration of PNF exercises that can be used as an effective treatment tool in treating Bell's palsy patients. The first exercise is to re-educate and strengthen the functions of the frontalis muscle. The therapist stands behind the patient and places both hands on the patient's forehead so that the fingers are pointing in a diagonal direction. The therapist gives command to the patient to lift the eyebrows up and look surprised and applies resistance on the stronger side of forehead by pushing the fingers downward and medially towards the tip of the nose. The therapist's fingers on the weaker side allows the motion to take place or gives assistance if required by pulling the fingers upwards and laterally. The patient is instructed to try and hold the end position of raised eyebrows for a second or two before bringing them back to the initial position. The therapist can further reinforce the action of frontalis muscle by resisting the neck extension movement. For this, the therapist bends the patient's head slightly forward and leans so that his chest is in contact with the back of the head of the patient. The therapist now gives command, push your head back, look up and raise your eyebrows. The therapist allows only a little motion of the neck extension to occur so that more irradiation can be achieved to weaker frontalis muscle. Repeat this exercise for 15 to 20 repetitions and take break in between if the patient feels fatigued. Now to exercise the corrugator muscle, the therapist's hand placement remains the same as before. The therapist 
now gives command to the patient frown and pull your eyebrows down and in the therapist do not allow full motion to take place on the stronger side by resisting the motion diagonally in an upward and lateral direction this helps in irradiation to the weaker side of the forehead the therapist's fingers on the weaker side allows or assist the motion to occur patient is always encouraged to be in end position for a second or two before returning back to initial position now to exercise the orbicularis oculi muscle the therapist has to use separate exercises for the upper and the lower eyelids to exercise the upper eyelids the therapist gives command close your eyes tightly and gives gentle diagonal resistance to the eyelid on the stronger side in the upward and lateral direction the therapist should avoid putting pressure on the eyeballs the patient is always encouraged to keep the eyes closed for a second or two or even longer if possible before opening them back again the therapist's fingers on the weaker side allows motion to take place and may even provide assistance if required similarly to exercise the lower eyelids the therapist places both the thumb just under the outer corner of the eye and applies resistance in a downward and lateral direction while again giving the command to the patient to close the eyes tightly the therapist always utilizing the timing for emphasis to further reinforce and irradiate the weaker side the eye closing action can further be reinforced by resisting the neck flexion movement along with the action of closing the eyes to exercise the procerus muscle the therapist gives command wrinkle your nose and applies resistance next to the nose on the stronger side diagonally in the downward and outward direction the rhizorius and zygomaticus major muscle are exercised together and the therapist gives command to the patient to smile and applies resistance to the corner of the mouth on the stronger side in the downward and medial direction to exercise the orbicularis oris muscle the therapist gives command purse your lips and whistle and gives resistance to the upper lips in the lateral and upward direction and to the lower lips in the lateral and downward direction levator labii superioris muscle is exercised by giving the command lift your upper lip and show your upper teeth and the resistance is applied to the upper lip in the downward and medial direction the buccinator muscle is exercised by giving the command suck your cheeks in and the therapist applies resistance on the inner surface of the cheeks with either the gloved fingers or a dampened tongue blade the resistance can be given in the diagonally upward or downward as well as in the straight out direction so these were some of the commonest facial muscles that can be exercised using the pnf concept of treatment for bell's palsy patients i sincerely hope that you like this video 
and will help us in reaching out to maximum number of physiotherapy students and practitioners. So in the end, I would like to say, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.